Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, Frankfurt United Methodist Church, and Mokina United Methodist Church merged together. I ask that you center yourself, take a deep breath, focus on the power of the divine coming into your life today as we journey through this daily devotion together. Friends, hear the affirmation. Heavy are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. Her profit is better than silver and her gain better than gold. Proverbs 3, 13, and 14. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? True wisdom is found only in you, O Lord. Grant us the wisdom to know what it is you would have us to do, to follow and serve you today and forever. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is wisdom. We talked about discernment last week. This week we're going to focus on wisdom. What is wisdom? How is it different from knowledge? What does this gift do for us in our spiritual life? And how is it used for the building up of not only our lives, but the world, for the church? Our anthology reading today comes from Reuben Job. What does the voice of God sound like? The voice from heaven reported in Matthew 17, 1 through 8 suggests that when we listen to Jesus, we hear the voice of God. The voice the disciples heard was understandable, and it was directed to them to listen to Jesus, the beloved Son. It is not that difficult to read the words of Jesus. To listen and obey to those words is more demanding. As Christians, we share the good news that God can be heard, understood, and obeyed. We have scriptures, nature, history, and the stories of our lives that speak to God's truth. Further, we have the capacity to hear God's voice deep within our own souls. Through the centuries, faithful listeners have discovered ways to sharpen their listening skills. Practices and disciplines increase our desire and capacity to be faithful to what we hear and know to be the voice of God. John Wesley called these practices the means of grace. That is, practices that mediate God's God's love, will, presence, and power in a very special way. A complete list of the means of grace likely includes all things. A God for whom all things are possible may use any and all things to address us. And yet it seems most often the voice and message of God are heard and the presence and power of God are felt when people quietly, fervently, and faithfully pray, worship, witness, and serve. Do you want to hear God speak to you? Polish up your practices of prayer, worship, witness, and service, and you will be amazed at what you hear. Amen. Uh, I'd throw generosity giving into that list (laughs) because that's our fifth thing in there. Um, But yeah, again, we, we often ask and desire and hope for, for more knowledge, more wisdom, or, or, or we just kind of shrug off that, well, I'm, I'm not that smart or, or I'm not that wise or I just don't understand. And are, are we asking for understanding or, or are we engaged, uh, as Bishop Job and as John Wesley would say, in the means of grace? Are we, are we making ourselves available in the times, places, and practices that throughout the course of human history have been shown to be places where God is present. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about the means of grace. Yes, God can be present in everything and anything, but we know that there are things where God shows up. And and people sh- share that every, every uh, you know, over and over again for centuries. We worship together because when two or more are gathered, Christ is present with us. When we pray and we're silent, we know that God can be present when we witness and share and when we serve and when we do good work. We know God can be present. So engage in those things and we'll see how wisdom offers itself to you.
and to me and to all people. Our scripture reading today comes from Second Chronicles verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 7 through 13. That night God appeared to Solomon and said, Ask whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. You showed much kindness to my father David, Solomon replied to God, and you have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be fulfilled, because you have made me king over a people as numerous as the earth's dust. Give me wisdom and knowledge so I can lead this people, because no one can govern this great people of yours without your help. God said to Solomon, Since this is your wish, and because you've asked for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I've made you king, rather than asking for wealth, riches, fame, victory over those who hate you, or even long life, your request for wisdom and knowledge is granted. But I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame beyond any king before you or after you. Hmm. Powerful words, and, and it's a great story, and, and one we we often talk about Solomon. Uh, you know, King David is is a, a figure that that many people are familiar with. Uh, the the king who united the tribes of Israel. His son Solomon was the king who uh, built the temple uh, in Jerusalem, the the first temple, uh, who who uh, grew the wealth of of the country. Uh, who, who had some issues himself, but we attribute uh, Proverbs and Song of Solomon and, and so much other wisdom literature to King Solomon because his prayer was for wisdom. And I think one of the things that we don't stop and do is ask for what we need. And and I, I mean that spiritually, but I mean, I think just in every day, so many of us are afraid to ask for what we need. We we we're not very good advocates for ourselves, and I think I, I think I'm seeing a shift in culture, and and I think it's good. Like it, we we get down at all the bad things, but there are some good things happening in our world as as history progresses. And one of those things I'm seeing, and I'm seeing it in young people, and I'm seeing it in people and relationships I I work with. We can advocate for ourselves and for others. Because not everyone is the same. Not everyone needs the same things. We, we shouldn't all, for example, if we're talking about the church, we shouldn't all come to church and, and expect, okay, this is what you need and this is what you need and, and you should pray this prayer and you should do this devotion. And we're all different and we need different things. And so whatever it is you're missing, whatever it is you feel you're lacking, ask. You know, that's one of my wonderful uh, tidbits about the, the, the communion table. It is there at the table that we can be equipped for mission and ministry. Because if God's calling you to do something, you're probably not ready. And that's the point. Solomon was not ready to be king. He said the only way... The only way anyone can rule your people is with your help. And the only way any of us can can live into the fullness of what God has in store for us is with God's help. And so whatever it is you're lacking, and, and if it's wisdom, pray for wisdom. Go to God. Ask. And you might receive. Friends, this first day of the week... Let us take time to give thanks to God. Adopting an attitude of gratitude can transform your life inside and out. So take this brief time of silence to thank God for everything. List as many things, big, small, and in between as you can. And let us give thanks.
Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.